see what happens here. It said live. Broadcast is live. We're live? Yeah, I got a ticker in the left-hand top corner. Okay. We're there. See if anybody gets on. Are we actually live, though? I don't know. Yes, we are. There, it just said. It's on. Are we actually live? Yes. Ooh. I just checked it. Oh, okay. We can see the up live in the upper left-hand corner. So what's up, guys? Yep. Welcome back to the channel. Um, we're using a, a new streaming program here tonight and probably for future events. But, um, okay, Samuel's here. He says, been waiting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now we can pop this up here and Samuel's comment and it says, yeah, you can see it. Cool. So, it's working. Yeah. Okay. So we're sorry for testing this out guys here, but we bought some adapters and stuff to try to make this work. And, um, we should be able to take live calls. Chris will be able to hear it. I'll be able to hear it. And you guys will be able to hear it through the speak, you know, speakers and stuff. So it should be good. Um, we have another, Somebody else here. That's one, else and only, joined in. one and only Carson says, hey. Yep. Another questions. Do you yeah, we know we're throw and grow. Yep. <laughs> so uh, the one and only Carson, um, I'll answer that quickly, and then we'll, we'll jump. I got to say a couple other things here, but um, grow and grow depends on what kind you use. I would look at the ingredients. If it says majority of them is um, – a lot of filler seed, which is ryegrass, which is no good. Um, look at just look at the ingredients, seed, what seeds it's in that bag, and go from there. Chris, yeah, full of filler, ryegrass, junk. Okay, all right. So real quick, we got some people here. So if you guys could do us a favor and share this live stream, um, we're just gonna have fun tonight, talk, and um, answer your questions live. If you guys want to call in. Guys, can call this number right here, and um, we'll answer some live calls over the uh, over the chat this afternoon. Chris, what do you got going on over there? Right now, I'm in the basement where it's quiet, but my furnace just kicked on. Is yeah, I heard too it. Much? Can you hear? It? Is it too loud? It it, it did kind of disrupt it a little bit, but it's all right. I right could, now. I could uh, move if I have to. I think we're okay. Sean Myers, how's it going? So, um, Sean Myers says no ryegrass. Definitely not no ryegrass. Samuel said no ryegrass. Yeah. Sean Myers, what's up, buddy? How's it going, brother? Going You're good, man. Going good. Going good. Can you get away from that furnace? Yeah, let me see if I can move out of this furnace area. This is ridiculous. Waiting on Chris again, as always. Ridiculous. Shed some light on this situation. There you go. <sighs> Turn there we go. Quiet. The school room. Look at all that curriculum in the background. Nice. Homeschooler edition. So, I hope you guys are doing well this afternoon. Um, like I said, we, you can call in. You can call live. And we'll answer your question, or you can uh, just comment. We'll pop your question up on the screen, and um, yeah, we'll just we'll sit here for the next hour and have a nice Q and A, sip some uh, sip, sip some coffee, so while, while Chris stares into the screen. And um, first thing, uh, live stream, you know, we're going to talk about, and if we get questions, we'll we'll stop what we're doing and answer your questions, but. First thing in food plots, um, when we're when we're talking for beginners, and even uh, advanced people, sometimes we get this, we get this mixed up, we get this confused, and um, you know we, we could use some direction on it. But uh, first time, you know, when you're when you're planting a food plot is location. Uh, location is key. We have we actually have a seminar coming out in about two weeks um, that will detail more information about this kind of want to drawing a little bit it's for the uh, madonna show um but uh first thing is location chris what do you got what do you got to say about that well like you say you have to have to have a piece of ground to to work in the first place mm -hmm. and uh gotta have some 
some place you can hunt, have permission to be or own. And you have to have a great location, just not a good location. You want a great location. What also and then get your soil samples. Yeah. Location too, it, it'll vary from property to property because sometimes if you're just leasing land or you get permission, you may not be able to take that perfect spot and create a food plot. You may have to work with something that you already have and it's still possible um, with different types of screening. And it all just, it all depends on your access because if you can't, if you're walking through the property to get into your food plot and you're pushing deer out or you're spooking deer or you're in your plot hunting around it, and you can't get out of it and you can't get into it without spooking deer. It's no good. Yeah, I agree. Got I a question agree. Here. Can't be pressuring them. <clears throat> Sean Myers, my plots here in North Carolina was on point this year, taking your advice on plots. My poor Z mower. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Must be brush hogging with his mower, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> poor thing. That's awesome, man. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah. I know. I see Josh is on here now. He said uh, he said he killed his first deer this year too. After watching some of our videos, gave him some ideas. He went. Yeah. He had a plan. He worked his plan. Shot his first deer with his bow. Awesome. By the way, he was one of the winners of the my ticket giveaway. Okay. I think he said he was down in Georgia. Gotcha. Uh, the one and only Carson. What are the best cheap broadheads, if any? Well, I don't think there's any cheap broadhead nowadays. Broadheads are pretty expensive. Um, honestly, I shot muzzy broadheads for probably uh, 12 years. You know, I think you can find them pretty cheap, but I'm a, uh, I'm a swacker guy now. I, I like uh, two blade swackers, uh, mechanicals. I believe in those a hundred percent. I have no affiliation with swacker company, broadhead company. Um, it's just something that I 100% believe in. I have shot rockets for years, mini blasters, steel heads, mm -hmm. and now the new ones. Um, I'm, I'm a believer in them. I just, uh, every once in a while, I go back to a solid head and I end up coming back to to the expandable somehow. Yeah. But I've, I've killed, I've killed bear with them and deer nice so no no problem mini yeah. blaster went straight through the bear yeah obviously no matter what brought you shoot it's all about shot placement well there's a couple of things shot placement foc front of center you got to have enough enough energy kinetic energy mm -hmm. you know so there's a few things broadhead sharpness yep but i like rockets definitely uh we got a long question here <clears throat> Connor, I'm hunting a property at my house. It is 20 acres of ag and 30 of mostly pine and hardwood mix. I can't plant any food plots, and my neighbor has a tree stand on the tree with the property line. Well, the 20 acres of ag is, uh, is good for spring and summertime, and it depends if uh, – most likely it's probably production ag, so they're cutting the corn, they're cutting the beans and, and all that. So come hunting season, you're going to be left with no food. And then in pine, there's going to be no food in the pines. Um, so, and you can't plant a food plot, it's going to be a tough situation because you're going to be lacking uh, food. So, and then obviously with your, uh, with your neighbor that has your tree, his tree stand on the property line, that's always a, that's always a frustrating thing, but basically you just have to, find those travel corridors where you can catch them coming through the maybe where it meets the hardwoods and the pines, you know, deer, deer like edge. That's an edge when it changes habitat, changes, uh, changes from, you know, pines to hardwoods. Um, and maybe, uh, leave a little, little note on your neighbor and, uh, see if you guys can work out something to get them to move a little bit, or there's really nothing you can do about that. As long as he's not, you know, facing your side. I I would make a comment here. Get Do yourself it. good trail cameras. Do it. Make a comment. Hush over there. I'd get yourself some good trail cameras and set them up. Mm -hmm. And as Dave said, that'll show you the good corridors. Yeah. If, if you're hunting the edge, if not, 
get yourself a good trail within the woods line there mm-hmm. somewhere somewhere obviously away from your neighbor yeah and uh, try to keep your distance and right. maybe you'll, maybe you'll see different deer yeah maybe you'll have good deer near you and he won't never know I, and if, you're, if you're in a state that you can bait i mean throw some corn out okay we answered that for connor by the way the farmer owns his property and he gave us permission talk to your farmer see if see if uh if some of the fields that he plants that what was it 20 maybe, acres of ag maybe see, he can leave you up a yeah chunk. maybe he can leave you up a, a little quarter acre or a half acre stand of beans you can broadcast some some wheat into it or some clovers or um or something like that or you can give him a couple bucks maybe he'll leave yeah you, he'll probably ask to be paid for it but yeah but i mean probably be worth it yes 100 percent. put him away from your neighbor's stand <laughs> yeah right <laughs> josh i've been using grim reaper broadheads so far they hit blinds and trees pretty good <laughs> <laughs> accurate huh <laughs> yeah definitely you gotta be accurate <laughs> that's one thing with the with the swackers is they're like for me they're they're dead on you know, compared to a field tip, they're dead on. I haven't had any issues with them. Yeah, rockets. I haven't had any issues. Uh, I've had some other mechanicals that I did have issues. I mean, they shot low left, that type of thing. Right. You got it. That's a tip too. You you just can't pull those mechanicals uh, and just shoot them. Expect them to be like a field point. Sometimes yep. they don't hit the same impact as your bro- as your field point. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta waste a couple of them to to make sure you're shooting right. Right. Definitely, for sure. It's expensive, but you got to be true to the animal too. You got to respect it and make your most, you know, make the best shot you can. Yeah, I um, like I said, I I've been a huge fan of the Swackers. Um, I tried the three blade a couple years ago when they first came out. wasn't a fan of them, so I just I've always stuck to the the two uh, the two inch two blade Swacker. I used to shoot the I think they were inch and they were inch and a half or inch and three quarter before they came out with the two inch. I shot those for several years before the before the two inch. Shooting the Matthews VXR now, shooting the True Car XB. Nice. Yeah, obviously, like I said, you can't go wrong with any with any broadhead these days, really. Um they all they all shoot pretty well. Just depends which one you you can find uh, that shoots good in your in your bow setup, basically. Take that away, Chris. I'm gonna, I got to share something real quick. Well, the one and only Carson said he's seen that you killed that doe with the two forty three. Would you trust the two forty three to kill any size deer? And I again would say shot placement is key. I think 243 would probably take down any deer. I've shot deer. I've seen a deer shot with a 22 through the lungs. I've actually shot deer uh, with a 22 250. And my son uses a 223. And usually those smaller calibers knock the lungs out of them like you threw a grenade in there and ran. Blows them up. So, so yeah, I, I, would, I would trust a 243. So you killed the dude two forty three. Yeah, I mean, shot placement is key for sure, hundred percent, no doubt. I mean, TJ shoots uh, twenty two two fifty. Twenty two two fifty. Plows them, you know, busts, knocks, them busts down. Nails, knocks them down. It just all depends on shot placement. I mean, yeah. I, would I use a two forty three for a moose? Probably not, but for a deer, why not? It works. Yeah. Wife shot my wife shot my blind first. One was my fault and shaking too bad at 40 yards shot with a crossbow. I think shot placement is key. Absolutely. 100 percent Bow, shotgun, muzzle loader, rifle. Doesn't matter. If you hit him in the wrong spot, you're not gonna kill him. Definitely. Dave, do you happen to have a a uh viewer count anywhere there yeah I do, not, I do not on my end ah um says 21 over here okay yeah i don't have that on my end gotcha 
we'll figure that out later on why. Yeah. We didn't so, miss. We didn't. No, we got them all. We didn't miss any yet. Yeah, not yet. All so, right. let's do this. Let's do it. So back to the location thing again. You know, when you're when you're starting a new food plot, is um, you can't be walking. You can't be walking through the plot to get to your stand, and the plot has to be in a location where it relates to your property, where you can easily maneuver around your property to get to it. Um, and again, there's sometimes where you just can't do that. You're on lease property, you're on private property, and you can't uh, put that plot wherever you want. In that case, then put that plot there, but maybe hunt off, you know, away from that plot to where, uh, you know, you have travel routes going to and from that plot. It would be a heck of a lot easier than hunting on the plot itself. But that's whenever you're creating a food plot, location is always number one. You always have to look at it, bird's eye view, get you know boots on the ground and determine, say, hey, if I put this food plot here, can I get in and out or hunt around this plot without spooking deer? Yeah, and if you can't, it's not something you want to be hunting a mm -hmm. couple of days a week. You want to pick right. and choose, skip yeah. around, be random. Right. Yeah. What just goes to if you if you can't get if you can't hunt the plot, then still do it, but hunt away from the plot. To where you can maneuver. Yeah, you have yeah. to do that. We got a lot of questions. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a huge hunter on the edge of fields. I like yeah. to hunt back in the woods myself. I like to go back and find a good avenue. Eric, what do you recommend for a plot screen switchgrass? Or what? Bushes. Oh, bushes, nine bark or dogwood. Uh, I wouldn't use dogwood because dogwood's food. Um, switchgrass can work for a screen, um, but switchgrass takes a lot of uh, prep work to make it work right. And then even then when it still grows, um, it's thin. It's a grass. You can see through yeah. it. If you're looking for a permanent screen, then, yeah, switchgrass would be good for that or trees or, or, or you know, switchgrass with complements of Egyptian wheat to get your, you know, until the Egyptian wheat establishes. But Egyptian wheat takes a lot of prep work to make work. Um, a screen, if you're using it to divide food plots, I have a video coming about the, about this on Tuesday. But if you're using a screen to divide food plots, use Egyptian wheat. Because after the season's over, who cares if the screen falls down? It doesn't matter. Hunting season's over. Doesn't it who cares? Um, if you're using it for a permanent screen, such for access, a road, whatever it is, then yeah, switchgrass or something else would be better than Egyptian wheat, um, unless you just want to replant it every year. But to simply divide plots and divide your access into that plot, uh, Egyptian wheat is a heck of a lot easier. It's easy to grow. And after the season, if it falls down, who cares? Stop spinning. You're making us dizzy. I'm trying to get rid of this glare. I got a wicked glare on the screen. Answer, answer Eric's question. Stop screwing around. Oh, boy. Hello? I think you already did. Okay. I'm, I'm not a fan of switchgrass. Okay. I think switchgrass is not high enough to make a screen unless you have enough of it wide enough. Uh, we don't want to talk about switchgrass too much and get Chris triggered. I get I get triggered about that. Well, it, it depends. It depends on elevation too. Yeah. Because if it's only ground five feet, right, and you're elevated or lower than the switchgrass, there's there's a certain height problem there it just I mean, depends on the it depends on the application not it one does. Thing. Every, everything's yeah, different yeah. we're not at your property so we can't tell you for sure uh yeah, you each, know sure fire thing yeah but, something's different but, something would be you know recommended for uh, each property differently hybrid sorghum and switch uh egyptian wheat yeah it's two good good things to go to yeah don't use food sources like millets and corn yeah. and things mm -hmm. like that. That's going to attract them. Right. Because that defeats the purpose of it being a screen. You want to sneak by it yeah. and not disturb the deer. So right. you don't want to use food sources mm -hmm. for screening. 
hopefully that helps Eric. Scott, I'm part of a lease where I can where I can't cut back any trees to allow more sunlight. What is the best seed to use with limited sun? Well, no seed is going to grow with no sun. Um, if you have limited sun, filter sunlight, then yeah, you could get some uh, some seeds to grow. Um, winter wheat, winter rye, oats as well. Uh, Domain makes a few different blends um, for low uh, low sunlight areas. Uh, Domain seed there. Um, I think they have like two or three different blends that will work well in, in shaded areas. But give them a call, talk to them, and see if it'll work. You know, see if it'll work for your application. Yep, yep. I killed my target buck this year with a 338 wind mag. <laughs> <laughs> plowed it. He plowed it. Oh, uh, <laughs> Scott, about the uh, seed was in uh, North Florida. North Florida. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, the old domain, they have, uh, yeah. what do they got? They got no BS. Yep. Um, um they got two other ones, I think. I can't yeah, think of any. What's the other one? Chick Magnet or whatever? Chick, no, Chick, what is it? Chick Magnet, I think. Yep. Chick Magnet? I think Chick uh, Magnet is one of them. Mix the cherry and uh, two clovers. different clovers. Yeah. Give it's them a call. Chick Magnet, is it? I, I no, think it's Hot Chick. Hot Chick. It's, hot chick. Called, it's called Hot Chick. Yeah. They it's have so many magnet. They have so many cool names. Um, it's hard cool to. Cool names. I can't keep them all in my yeah. head. They got Sugar Mama. They got Incognito. Yeah. Um, they got cool no, names. Uh, no BS, um, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But give Mike a call. No, I think no BS and, and the and the hot chick was the two big ones that they yeah. use in the shaded areas. And you want you want at least you know four to six hours of filtered sunlight minimum. Yeah. Good. Here's our buddy from Alaska. Ooh, he's here again. Mm -hmm. What's up, Rock and Retirement? I wish I was in retirement. What's up, buddy? I know this is off topic, but do did you announce your new sponsor yet? I have not. Um, probably in two weeks, week or so. Um, I'll I will announce that for sure. Hopefully, we get some some information on that soon. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, one we got a hundred percent. A couple other ones we're kind of, you know, we're just waiting to finalize things, but. Uh, we should have some nice, nice ones coming out this year. Travis, I hope this is not as painful watching as it is what you're doing right now. Passing kidney stone, watching this, and, <laughs> and saving Private Ryan at the same time. Male birth. Some comic relief for you, Travis. I'll, I, I'll, uh, I'll shed some light on that because, for you. <laughs> um, I guess about eight years ago, I had one. I was, uh, I was working out of town, and I was basically living out of a hotel. And I worked all day, perfectly fine. I got off work, went to the hotel room, and all of a sudden I had this pain in my kind of like mid back, and it kind of wrapped around my rib cage and went down into my groin area. And I didn't. I was like, I mean, I was curled up. I, it came out of nowhere. I jumped in the shower, took a hot shower. I came out, felt like a million bucks. All of a sudden, like ten minutes later, it came back. I called uh, some guys I was working with, and um, they were they were hungover, they were drinking, and I, they couldn't take me to the hospital. So I basically army crawled down the hallway, down two flights of stairs, made it to my van, work truck, and I drove myself to the ER. And I went in there to did a scan or something. They said you have two kidney stones. Gave me some medicine called Flomax. Very next day, I started taking the Flomax and some pain meds for like three days. All of a sudden, it went away. Two months later, I went I went to use the bathroom and it came out two months later. But I had no pain from that time up until the time that it passed. But two months go by and it came out easily. No pain. What do you recommend to get deer to come? Because I didn't shoot a deer at all this year. Well, there's uh three main things to that. One is pressure, two is food, and three is bedding. We have no idea what kind of property you have, but deer live by those things. You know, they got to have safety, they got to have food, they got to have water, um, and they can't be pressured. 
So if you're pressuring your land too much, they're going to bail. You know, they're going to go somewhere else where there's no pressure. If you have no food, then they're going to travel wherever there's food. So, you know, yeah, they still may pass through your property every once in a while, but you got to have those things. You got to have food, you got to have cover and you got to have water and the least amount of pressure um, as possible. Chris? It's a loaded question because we don't know where he's at or where yeah. he's, you know. But those main things, I mean, you got to go by that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, missed a question. Oh, missed a couple of them. Oh, he's just stating that he has problems in his area with people shooting younger eight points. He's frustrated. Man, we have so much trouble with people. Sean, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, – Whatever is legal and whatever makes you happy, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you can't really control what, what can't somebody control else what do. Others do. Um, it, it's up to you, you know, if you want to pass on those younger ones and, and try to shoot something bigger. I have a video about this, you know, just because you pass a deer doesn't mean anybody's going to shoot it. I mean, it may live another year. It may not. Um, it's just a hard thing to do, you know, when uh, – if you're all your neighbors aren't working together um, for me personally, um, I don't really want to shoot like the biggest buck. I mean, yeah, I mean, I do, but if I don't, it's not like a huge deal. Do I want to shoot a four pointer or a six pointer or a small eight? No, I want to wait for something that's, you know, something that's decent like this buck here, this buck scored 182 inches. Am I ever going to shoot one of them again? Probably not. But you know, here's 132. This one's 120. You know, I would love, I'll shoot them every year, all year long. Um, but it also has to relate to your area. You know, each area is going to produce a different quality or different age structure of, of deer. Um, and if your neighbors, all your neighbors aren't working together, then it's a little bit tougher. What's the best time to start spring food plots in Georgia? Oh... Uh... Make sure you're out of frost season. Yeah, I mean, I'm not familiar with, you know, that area, but um, you're just going to have to go by frost. You know, as soon as that soil temperature starts warming up, the daytimes are in the 60s and, you know, mid 60s and, you know, low 70s and your soil temperature comes up and you have no dangers of frost plant. Yeah, soil temperature at 55 would be great. Yeah, yep, which is going to give you daytime highs of, you know, 65 60s upper 60s something like that that should bring that should be a good time you can't really never say a date <clears throat> because everywhere is going to be different you know you have to go by soul temp you have to go by outside temp you have to just go by that and not um a specific date it's just frost i'm not retired yet two more years of army life and then back to ohio planning on starting my channel when I retire and leave Alaska. That's awesome. Very It'll be cool. nice. It'll be nice for you. Retired from the service. That's a that's something you don't hear of a lot anymore. Uh, Kurt, do you like canola in your brassica plots? I've never personally planted canola. Um, I know Jeff from uh, Antler Grower. They used to plant it down in uh, Florida all the time, and um, the deer you know tore it up. But uh, for me personally, I've never planted it. I've heard good things about it, um, but I've never personally planted it. I never have either. Then you're no help. No. Useless. On that topic, yes. I've always said I just got to do my part. Yeah, that's all you can do. Unless, unless all your neighbors are working together, it's, it's a little bit tougher. Josh, my first buck this year was a spike. I kind of panicked, shot it. I was watching all the deer filtering into the field and was looking down the scope at him, and my phone rang. Rookie mistake. Yeah, it's uh, it happens all the time to the best of us. I mean, I missed that buck this year. Well, wasn't a miss, but uh, a low shot. Grazed him. Sucks. Oh, missed a question. I'm not sure about that one. No till over recommendations. 
I guess he's looking for no-till recommendations. No-till uh, recommendations? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Clover recommendations. Um, we love planting clover. Um, if you plant it in the spring, it's a little bit harder to get established because you have weeds to deal with. Um, you could plant that in the fall. We did that two years ago. We planted it in the fall, mixed in with wheat and rye. Um, and then come springtime, we had tons of beautiful clover. Um, you can also frost seed that in the spring into wheat and rye. Or if you have bare soil, um, you can frost seed it uh, that way. Um, you know, depending on, on how big of a area that you want to plant, uh, domain has a bunch of seeds, clover seeds that you can check out. Um, we'll be, we'll be frost seeding clover, you know, from them guys this year as well. I think Chris is too, right? Frost yeah, if you're going to frost seed, i go with something hardy like the Ladina or mm -hmm. a, a red clover. If you got wet spots, go with some all psych. Yep. Stuff like that. Do y'all do any fishing? Uh, the one and only Carson. Years ago, I used to fish um, like crazy, but I haven't honestly fished in uh, probably over 10 years. Um, I just don't have time. My focus is on hunting and, and food plots and land management and YouTube and all this other stuff, and I just I don't have time to fish. I dabble with it. Around me, there's a river that's small mouth and a lot of creeks that they uh, stock with trout. I did go with you. And yeah, you went with us. We caught a couple of little small moths, but I didn't. I didn't fish because I didn't have a license, and uh, yeah. I wasn't buying a license to go for two hours. <laughs> two hours. The only the only thing I miss about Pittsburgh was the fishing. Mm -hmm. When I lived in Pittsburgh, I lived above Highland Park Dam, which is down by the Pittsburgh Zoo. Mm -hmm. And I went up river a little bit towards Lock Three, and there was a mouth opening there called Deer Creek dumped into the allegheny river mm -hmm. and man it was a slaughter down there i just loved fishing i didn't eat any of them sewage plant was right there too yeah so probably not I didn't, eat them. Yeah. didn't eat them but man the fishing was good do we frost seed yeah we frost seed yeah answer kurt's question i think we already did but kurt we do oh. do some frost seeding and uh I'm in PA. Dave's in Maryland. Um, I have plenty of time to frost seed around here. It's always cold and nasty. Just ask Dave, the Southerner. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I I don't know if you heard earlier, but if you if you get it in in the fall, if you can put it in the fall with some of your fall plantings, uh, it'll get established before dormancy, before winter hits, and then in the spring it'll start to green up with everything else that you have going on in the plot. Hopefully you're planting 365. That's one of my pet peeves. Plant something so that there's something growing all year round. So in the fall, like a, a winter wheat, winter rye, or an oat, an oat will die at the first really hard hard uh, frost. But if you have uh, the wheat and rye and some some uh, clovers in there, why, as soon as it temperatures uh, get up past 33 degrees, the wheat and the rye will start to green up and will still germinate at that low temperature and your clovers will be established early. It's hard to get clovers to be established in spring and summer. Um, if you do go with spring and summer plantings of clover, you probably want to start with an annual that will grow very, very quickly and will smother weeds. So just my two cents there. Aaron, what's up, buddy? How's it going, Aaron? Yes. Yeah, yeah very cool. Thank very you. cool. Service. Very I'm cool. also sitting in the basement, Eric, enjoying the fire, waiting on the snow to start. Yeah, we're supposed to get a foot here. <laughs> I'm, in my I'm in my basement right now. <laughs> it's quiet down here. The one did and only you? Carson. You skipped one. Did I? Yeah. He lives in Chickamauga, Ooh. so it's hard not to fish. Oh, boy. Yeah. Did I say that right? Chickamauga? Chickamauga? 
Muga. Chickamauga. Chickamauga. GA picks up that buck on hoof later after the low hit. Yeah. Sure um, did. We, we got videos out about it. Got videos. We saw it. We recorded them live. Or not live, but we recorded them on film. After that, I actually missed him again um, during the run I was there. And I was there, I think it was November 1st or October 31st. It was raining. And it was a morning hunt, I believe. Afternoon. It was an afternoon hunt. Midday. I think it was midday. And he, he come straight out in front of me, running, trotting, chasing a doe. I stood up, drew my bow back. I got right to this point right here. And I was shooting a thumb release. Got the right to this point, And my hand slipped off the release. The bow, the, the release went slinging. Never did find my release. Gone. I was out of release. So I had to climb out of my stand. I drove uh, to Dunham's, right? Yeah, I went to Dunham's. Um, bought a new release, came back, and then I saw him again like three days later. Couldn't get a shot. Then I had a bigger buck come out. Missed that one. It was a rough season. Okay. What? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address the next two in one answer here. I only see one. Okay. Well, I've, I've got the next one. There's Sean and Kurt. Okay. Here's Kurt. Okay. If both of you could go over to my channel, City Sticker Chris. Kurt, I have a short video clip called he lives and that is the 10 point dave uh graze across the brisket that he's talking about and then kurt he's converting an ag field to pods of switch and diversity with some food plot strips any recommendations uh i'm not gonna i'm not telling you what to plant but uh, i have a whole playlist over there called pasture to plot where i took a 20 acre field that was horse and cow pasture and i sectioned off two acres of it and made some beautiful plots this year so maybe that would help you uh with your planting but as far as recommendations on food just make sure you get something green in the ground and it's there all year yeah 365, 365. yeah i mean when you're converting ag fields open fields like that i mean switchgrass you know, would be good for that to create, uh, you know, some cover in there. Um, you got to have food. Um, I would plant maybe some clovers in there, um, strips of, uh, you know, different brassicas and, and things like that um, within there. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with, with fields. I mean, you can even plant some trees, um, you know, different types of setups like that, but just to create edge and, uh, like you said, create diversity. Um, yeah. Oh, long question. Any strategy on using a large creek bordering my property uh, to my advantage? It is somewhere I should avoid or can I enhance the area to my advantage? It's hardwoods on my side and ag on the other using a large creek boring my property to the advantage yeah i mean you can you can use that creek um to access your property um i used to do that years ago on uh an old property I used to hunt it was a lease and um it was a uh, lots of creeks in there and i i would just walk the creek um to get to my stands and to access different parts access a food plot um but yeah anywhere you want to avoid yeah i mean obviously you know you don't want to walk through an area where the deer are bedding or feeding um you have to figure that out and use the you know the creeks um accordingly so you're not bumping deer out you know every place you walk um another good spot would be up against that hardwoods and ag uh which is a good would be a good edge um you can probably i would say hunt that um, you catch deer, you know, traveling that edge during the rut. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, that's what I would do without, without seeing it. It's hard to, it's hard to answer. Yep. Thanks, Sean Mars. 
I gotta go watch it. What's the name of his channel? City Sticker Chris. He lives. Josh. Got a quick question. When you kill a plot before turning it back in, does spraying the killer hurt the deer or do they smell it on the plants? Well, they're not it's not gonna affect them smell wise or nothing like that. Does it really hurt the deer? Well, that's a controversial It's topic. questionable. Yeah. yeah, it's questionable. It's controversial. There's people that say it does you know, affect them over time. There's people that say that it doesn't bother or doesn't affect them at all. Um, my honest opinion is I believe that it does for long-term use because it's the same with GMO foods. You know, GMO foods is made from you know, filled with glyphosate and that's a whole other story. But when you ingest like glyphosate and these different types of toxins, um, they accumulate in your fat tissue. And it's the same for deer. When you look at disease, um, you know, deer that magically die, where is that concentration at in ag country? Because all the farmers are spraying chemicals and all these different stuff. And it's usually an, an upper age class of deer because over the years of ingesting that, chemicals builds up in their fat tissues and then all of a sudden they die um like i said it's controversial i don't think there's ever going to be a time where it's proven you know it's just not one of them things that's going to be proven there's theories out there with whether it affects humans or animals um but just in my opinion i think that it does so for that reason that we try to use or me personally i try to use as less you know, chemicals as possible. Are they needed when it comes to food plots? Sadly, yes, sometimes. Um, but there are ways that you can go around and uh, and not, you know, use, you can use less of them if you follow proper steps and uh, keeping things green and growing in your plots for as many months as possible, not having bare soil will prevent a lot of weeds. And, you know, weeds aren't really a bad thing, you know, all the time in the spring and summer. If you have some weeds, who cares? When you go to plant your fall food plot, most weeds are going dormant, you know, that time of year anyway. So you just till, till them back in and um, you're good to go. What do you guys say about that? Nothing? You're quiet. I would, I would say, I would say if you're going to spray it off, I would probably mow it down short, mm -hmm. wait, wait about a week and then spray it, get a good kill. And then go in and turn it in. I'm sure they probably do smell chemicals. I mean, we can smell them, so I know they can. But I've seen deer come out into the fields after we've sprayed, and they're eating. Yeah. And the long-term effects, I don't know. But yeah. I will. I have an insider in the in the chemical world that swears up that it affects them, that it kills them. So. Yeah. I'm, I can't say who it is, but that's just, again, probably his yeah. opinion. But. Then again, I I know a fellow that he swears up and down that he says deer, you can't poison a deer. They mm -hmm. eat poison ivy. They could drink antifreeze, whatever. You can't poison them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're – who knows? Josh, uh, and do you have any hinge cutting videos? I have, I think, two that I did last year. Um, when I was hinge cutting the property that we're hunting together on, uh, in the next four to five weeks, we're going to have, I'm going to have a ton of videos on this. Uh, we're going to be cutting a bunch of timber, hinge cutting, creating trails, um, and all that stuff. So definitely in about four to five weeks, we'll have a whole playlist full of them. Oh, he must've went and watched my video and said, yeah, that was good. Oh yeah. Yep. 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 Josh, yeah, when like when we plant something in the in the uh, spring, um, whether it's clover, buckwheat, or whatever, I'm not spraying and killing the plant and turning it back in. We're using what's there and just disking it, get back into the soil. Is it needed sometimes? Yes. Like we had to spray this year on a new plot that we um, established. 
because there's just so many, it was so many weeds from, you know, working the ground and, um, and all that, but were you going to need it this year? Probably not. I'm not going to do it. But when you're establishing, you know, a first time plot, sometimes it's needed. It also depends on the implements that you have to use. Um, you know, how good is, is your disc? How good is your, if you have a rototiller, it, what are you working with, you know, to really disc those weeds and, and kill the weeds that way. But the key with all of it is to have something green grown all the time. Yeah. And there again, over the, at my channel there, that pasture plot, uh, that playlist, I think it's episode three where we you spray that. Episode. Yeah. Okay. We uh, spray that pasture because like I said, it was untouched for 20, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was so thick a thatch and just garbage. Yeah. Like the, it was, it was waist high and the deer weren't even hardly coming to it. And I went out and brush hogged it and it was just, it exploded. The whole field exploded. Mm -hmm. um, and, but yeah, it's sometimes it is needed, you know, it, when it's thick like that, you spray it down and just kill her off. And then I agree with rock and retirement. I can see his next comment down there. Um, I don't, I don't, use I don't normally use them in that one instance. That's the first time I ever used chemicals was last year on that, that pasture plot. Yeah. I think they're um, overused over definitely 100% overused in the food plot world because everybody's scared of a weed, but um, weeds aren't all bad. No. Weeds I mean, some, aren't all bad. Sometimes chemicals are needed and, and sometimes they're not. Again, each each situation is different. Um, it just depends. Well, I do I do have something to say in that one episode that hmm. when I did burn it down, turned it in, I probably should have waited a couple weeks and sprayed again. Because I got a heck of a catch of ragweed in there. But ragweed's not all bad, so I wasn't sorry about that because that was just as attracting as the plow down clover that I planted. In the, in the spring and summer, it's not bad. Yeah. They love that ragweed. Mm -hmm. um, ragweed is super high in protein. I, I didn't count it as a loss. I just – it didn't go my way. Yeah. I wasn't expecting ragweed to follow that spraying. But it did because it uprooted a lot of weed seed. Mm -hmm. But it was the only weed that came up, which I was surprised. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a loss. They loved. They ate the ragweed right down to the dirt. I mean, I think they took care of it before the clover. To be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so rag ragweed. Ragweed's not a bad thing. Yeah, ragweed in the spring and summer is highly, um, highly attractive. You know, deer they'll tear the heck out of it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You don't you don't know for sure. Oh, I know for sure. Video account. You wouldn't know. You live four hours away. Yeah, I think I'm there more than I am home. Sometimes. Planting season and hunting season. Yeah. Well, you probably can you see Travis's next no. He says yeah. upping the seed rate to control weeds, uh, frost controls lots of broadleaf. Yeah. Um, good and bad to that. Upping, well, depends. It, it depends on what it is you're upping the seed of, but a lot of times if you're upping seed on things, um, you're kind of defeating the purpose. Some of those seeds need space. When you put a dense amount of seeds on, it just crowds itself out and stunts things. Uh, in the, it might not, yeah. And it might not stunt the weeds. It might be just the seed that you planted. Yeah. In the fall, I would say, yeah, you, you know, be careful. If you're planting brassicas, you don't want to overseed them. But in the spring and summer, like buckwheat, I use a lot of buckwheat per acre because it will uh, shade out the weeds and you'll have a good stand of buckwheat. Um, but yeah. You can plant it too thick too, though. Yeah, you can. Um, a few extra pounds on that situation is not going to not going to hurt you. Um, you know, with that, you know, when you buy, when you buy a bag of seed that says it covers a half acre, um, it goes quick and 
a lot of a lot of people have issues with weeds because they're using that seed that says it plants a half acre they're putting it out and then all of a sudden you get birds you get birds eating the seeds some of it doesn't germinate so now you're left with bare spots and then you have weed problems because you didn't use you know enough seed so you have to compensate for issues like that birds turkeys some seeds not going to germinate um so that's you know uh why a lot of weeds you know grow Another issue with weeds too is acidic soil. Weeds thrive in acidic soil. So when you over time, if you start to correct your pH, um, you'll just naturally have less weeds because weeds don't like that, you know, alkaline soil. Yep. Every year you do something, the next year it gets better. You better answer this one. Oh boy, do you really want to know? Tell the story. <laughs> says, Dave, how did you and Chris meet? Well, long story short, uh, the Harrisburg show in Pennsylvania. What do they call it now? The Great American Outdoor Show, sponsored by the NRA. Um, I had been going to the show for years, and uh, we actually – I always stopped by the Antler Grow booth because I was intrigued with that spray micronutrient foiler feeding spray that we use on our plots and a couple of years in a row I stopped there and talked to Jeff the owner there and um, never really committed because I'm a skeptic naturally but I came back oh I can't remember what was it three years ago Dave probably yeah, yeah. I think it was three years ago um, Jeff usually had some sort of person in his booth, either be TV celebrity or somebody. Dave happened to be a YouTube guy, and he always had people on his in in his booth with him to help promote. And I came down to the show. Dave was there. Um, I was talking with Jeff. I said hi to Dave. We talked a little bit, and. When I came home from the show, we, we became Facebook friends. And then a couple weeks after the show, Dave, <laughs> Dave ended up uh, – he uh, was get, wanting to get this lease in PA in, my, in the uh, – just beyond Punxsutawney here, about an hour from my home. And he put a post up asking if anybody knew where he could find lime to get delivered to this property. And um, I messaged him and – told him I could probably set that up for him so I got it arranged and had it delivered to the property and it was a lot of lime and I asked him I said how are you going to spread all this lime and he said well he, he thought he had a couple guys lined up or whatever well at the last minute they pulled out so I messaged them back and said hey if you need help uh spreading that lime I'll I'll come and help you so started uh Started off that way, really. We met at the show. I got him hooked up with, with Lime through a supplier here that I know from my hometown called J&J &J Feeds and Needs in Brookville, Pennsylvania. They delivered it on site, helped us unload it, and Dave and I went down and spread it in the rain. In the rain. For two hours in the mm -hmm. pouring down rain. But we got it was more than a it was more than a ton. It was a, it was a you got 3,000, uh, 3,000 pound that day, didn't you? It was 3,000. I think it was, I think it was a ton and a half. We spread in two hours. Mm -hmm. So that's how we met. And, um, for helping him, he said, Hey, do you want to hunt here with me sometime? And I hunted with him a few times and he realized I was a rock star and it's been a love affair ever since. There we go. Next next got a ground hog max looking to get a few small plots in this year my thought was to use it late winter early spring before the roots of grasses and such get established thoughts go ahead yeah. okay well <clears throat> we happen to use this product sometimes um at least in one area that we uh, prepare mm -hmm. a plot in the woods. We use it 
we beat it up pretty well and it takes it um let me see what else he says my thoughts using late winter early spring yeah you you would like to use it when there's a little bit of soil moisture and it, it's easier to break up the ground then with that implement uh, if you do it in the middle of summer when it's hard as a rock man you just gotta go lap after lap and it takes a long time to work something up but when there's a little bit of moisture and uh, make sure you've got a good hitch on that bike mm -hmm. uh, you will see dave has a video on his channel of me fixing his hitch um on the bike that i now own his first bike was the little green one and i bought that off he he has a big red one now why then we tore the red hitch last year off of it yep pulling the ferminator around so there's another video floating around of me fixing this second hitch well now, that was my channel yeah I yeah it's on your channel but um flares. yeah atv hitches don't uh they're, they're not just very not, strong they're not they're, very strong at all now Groundhog max does they do have some kits out there now yeah. for certain bikes right but if they don't, if you watch the video on my channel of me fixing Dave's Polaris, is a good example of what you could do, like universally to fix any hitch that you mm -hmm. want to put on a bike. Yeah, they're just not meant to take that abuse. No, not at all. Very not thin. All. Yeah, they'll tow something, but when there's weight on it, look out. Yeah, you got, sure. you're gonna tear up an axle. Oh yeah. Or just tear the hitch off. You know what else you got? What else you got? No live callers today. None. What's up with that? I don't know. You guys, you guys could be calling that number right there and asking live. Well, instead, instead of typing them all out. Somebody, somebody actually asked me the other day what was the deal with the live call, and I went out. <laughs> I'd searched on YouTube and there's no, I couldn't really find any person that, that did it. No hunting channels, no, really nobody to do it. That was taking live calls. Um, there's some, but on the hunting world, nobody that I could find did it. So I thought it would be something cool to do to help people. And I went out and bought this audio thing to, and these new mics and these adapters and this this cord here that plugs into my iPhone that, that plays all back through the speakers and I spent like four hundred bucks <laughs> to try to make it work and um, it, it it worked the first few times it was very popular people were calling in I was getting bored like people it's not my real number obviously but um it's an app that creates a number and you can have people call through this app and it was uh. It was very cool to start with, and then um, it kind of, uh, you know, honestly died out. But I thought it was a good idea <clears throat> um, at first, um, and people did. You know, people were using it. But again, now I'm thinking, well, why would they call when they can just comment, you know, and ask the question on the video? But whatever. It's all right. Yeah. It gets both ways. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you fail. I thought it was a cool experiment. Mason asks, I need a gun that shoots 250 yards. Any recommendations? Really? I personally have a 270 short mag in a Weatherby and just totally dropped the dough at 300 yards. Held right on. No doping. No, no English. Nothing like that. I just dropped her. 300 yards. It shoots flat. What was that gun you shot that doe with the first year as a blind? That was my, that was my seven MM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That dropped some flat. That was what? 200 yards. That was just a hair over 200. Yeah. You know, that dropped some flat too, but at over 200 yards, you got to start aiming a little bit higher, mm -hmm. you know, cause the seven MM will drop a little bit on you. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's others out there. Those are my preferences. Aaron says 308. I'm sure that would get it done too. Y'all are the only first that I've seen doing live calls. Yeah, like I said, it was it was great. The first like three times people were calling, and even after the live stream was over, my phone was blowing up. Like I'm like, uh, we're not live anymore. So there, I had to 
you know, there's a do not disturb button on it. <laughs> so I was, I had to turn that on because so many people were calling. You blocked um, them. I didn't block them. I just banned them at that current moment. You banned them. Um, but yeah. Travis says 270 Winchester. I like a 270. 270 that's, short that's, mag is smoking though. I think that's going to be my next gun. I like a 270. If I was going to buy another gun, I'd probably be 270. Yeah, I think it's going to be my next one. <laughs> Getting YouTube comments. Um, it's funny. I just got like eight YouTube comments on on older videos, but they don't even realize we're live. Oh. It's just the way YouTube, YouTube works. Can you still see me if I click up? Where are you going? If I click over to YouTube or something? I can see you, yeah. Okay. I'm going to click away for a second. Just check my messages here. You ain't got no messages. I got fans. You got no fans. I got fans. We got none. Um, I'm gonna touch, yeah. Um, I'm going to touch on this real quick um, touch it, while, you're, touch it. while you're screwing around. So um, on this seminar video we have coming out, we detailed this, but I'll touch on it a little bit now is um do you, do you need a spring food plot and like when when i plant in a spring i'm not necessarily planting deer food i'm planting typically buckwheat is there times where we plant soybeans or different types of deer food yeah we do clovers but majority of time i'm planting buckwheat and that is to build organic matter in the soil and prep the soil for the fall planting. So the question is, do you need a spring food plot? Well, the easiest way that I know to explain it is if you're in an area that has tons of agriculture around, you know, those deer have tons of food to consume. So it depends what they're planting. If it's all corn, then that's not really food until the fall. And then even then it's going to get harvested if it's production egg. It's going to get cut, then you're left with nothing anyway. But if you're in an area that has soybeans or clovers and alfalfa fields and, you know, something that deer is going to consume and you're working with a quarter acre food plot, do you really need to plant clovers or soybeans to help benefit the deer? And the answer is no, because they have all this other ag that they can consume. Now in the fall, it's going to be your ticket. So in that, in that situation, I would take your food plot and not so much focus on deer food. I would focus on preparing that soil for the fall planting, which, which would be an annual clover or an even better bet would be buckwheat. Now, if you have 200 acres, 500 acres, 1,000 acres, and you can plant 20, 30 acres of food plots, 10 acres of food plots, by all means, 100% go for it because you're going to be able to benefit that deer. But if you're, if you're working with this little quarter acre, this and this and this, don't stress yourself out about it. Let them feed in the ag fields and, and do it that way. Hello. What he said, what he said. Okay. He ain't got no comment. He's nah, ain't got a comment. Cat just mother out them weeds in the spring. Cat has his tongue in the, in the fall. You shouldn't have a big problem. I've seen that new caliber come out. I have not. But I don't know if that's just another attempt at a, the answer to the 6.5 Creedmoor or what. Yeah. All these wildcat, you know, wildcat, wildcat calibers that are coming out. They might be hard, you know, either hard to get ammo for or very expensive. I know that 270 short mag, I'm looking at like 31 bucks for 20 shells, mm. up, up to 40 for a box of those shells. So I'm going to be reloading those bad boys. Um, Mason, I was sort of thinking a 350 or 450 just because I have, I have to have straight wall cartridge. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anybody who has the 350. Or the 450 Bushmaster, I'm not sure. New fan here. New fan there. All right, Sean. For me, he hates you. No. They all love 
the comedic co-host. They don't like straight-faced people like you, just blah, 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 blah. Whatever. Uh, Mason, also, any tree stand recommendation? I personally like money, but I'd like to get your opinion. Um, I'll be honest with you. I haven't bought a new stand in many, many years. Um, I used to work with a company called Hawk Tree Stands, and I had a bunch of those. And I still have them. So that's all I've used. They've lasted for many, many years. Um, so that's all I can really go off of. I do have a couple. Do I have a couple monies? I think I do have a couple monies that we use. Um, but I love the Hawk Tree Stands. Before that, I was using cheap brand like River's Edge and some uh, some other ones like that. Um, and for me personally, like I want to be comfortable when I when I sit because I some of the stands the seat sits too close to the tree and you're and you're like hunched forward and it's just very uncomfortable. Um, for me personally, right now, just because I can't really give you any other recommendations, um, I like the Hawk tree stands and they're they're fairly priced. I think the Hawk combat is what i had i think i had like 20 of them um i think it's like it's like 80 bucks or 70 bucks or something but it's a very comfortable tree stand and then i had another one what's that three piece stand i have oh uh what is that um so it's uh oh boy uh can't <laughs> take down tree stands Advanced. Um, yeah, advanced takedown tree stands had a tree. St they went out of business, I think. Um, heavy though, aren't they? Uh, they are heavy, but they're a three piece because it comes with the the vertical piece for your tree. It comes with the seat and the and the um, yeah. platform separate, and you kind of put it together with ratchets, and it, it's a very cool setup. Um, that's a very comfortable tree stand as well. But um, again, I'm going to go back to the hawks. Mark, what about feeding them corn year round along with mineral blocks? I get this question a lot and um, feeding deer corn. I, I have tons of videos about this, but um, feeding deer corn is not very beneficial to deer. It has almost zero nutritional content for them. Um, if you do it year round, you know, con you know, 365 is going to benefit them. Maybe a small small percentage um but not very much corn is just not a very nutritional thing for deer and it's not a nutritional thing for us um it has zero nutritional content for them other than a little uh, some carbs and a little bit of fat um and as far as mineral blocks go it's the same same type of thing i mean using mineral blocks and you're putting it on the ground and forcing the deer to eat dirt. And uh, it's just not the way deer are naturally meant to get minerals. You know, deer get minerals through plants and the plants get it from the soil. Um, if you're feeding mineral blocks year round, is going to have a benefit? Eh, nobody knows. You know, um, it may have a very small, minute benefit to the deer, but the only way to see true potential through deer is by food, green and growing plants, Brows, woody brows, you know, having as much actual food as possible. Um, because those mineral blocks, they're in the, they're not in the right form. You know, they they consume them, it goes right through them. Um, you know, people, companies can twist the bag and say, oh, it's, you know, it's this. We formulated it this way, be, you know, for it to uh, digest and they're you know more readily absorb and this and that. They can twist it every way. Um, they can, but it's also you're can, you're talking about taking a three foot circle of a mineral and trying to benefit a wild free ranging deer that ranges for you know a half mile to a mile, and you're trying to concentrate them down into a three foot circle to give them minerals when they have hundreds of acres of minerals already there through the plants. So, do I think it benefits them? Honestly, my my true honest opinion is uh, probably not. If it does, it's a very minute uh, deal. Go green. Go green and spray it with antler grow. There's all your mineral. Hey, Steve, what's up, buddy? I ain't talked to Steve in forever. 
he's busy. I don't see his other question. I think he was re replying to the other guy that wanted the uh, uh, straight straight walled shell for hunting. Gotcha, gotcha. Forty five seventy would pack a punch. Uh, Rays in the Thumb area, Michigan helped him develop a four fifty. Unique system that works. It just works. Mark, what are some good climbing sticks? Chris, you just bought some hawk sticks, huh? Yeah, man. I just bought some heliums. Uh, 20 now, inches. They stack up four high, less than 10 pounds. Good. The question, what you is, the question is, what the heck did you buy them for? What is our special event this year? Here's the plan. Uh-oh, he's serious. Here's, he's the, here's the plan. We are planning on a Sika hunt, eastern shore of Maryland. That's right. And we're going to have – we're going to go in early, scout month before probably mm -hmm. of the opener – what is it, muzzleloader only, Dave, in October there? Uh, it'll, you can still use a bow, but it'll be the – it'll be opening days. Opener, of muzzleloader. muzzleloader. Yes. So we're, we're going to try to go in there with the CVAs. We're going to pack in. We're going to go scout and try to get away from everybody, mm -hmm. try to get far back as we can stand the mosquitoes. And uh, we're going to try a sicka hunt this year, hopefully make some good video. Yes, I cannot wait. I did this. Um, I've never shot one, so Dave tells me it's sweet meat. Yes. Um, I did this 15 years ago. Let's see. Um. I did this about 15 years ago and I shot one. It was probably the worst experience of my life because, <laughs> because it was uh, raining and it was mos talk about mosquitoes. I mean, I thought I was going to be carried away, but back then we didn't have, I didn't have thermocells or nothing. So now we, you know, we got to get thermocells, which I already have. Chris is getting one. We just got to, we got to be prepped for this and me doing this before I can help, you know, explain to Chris kind of what we need. But uh, it's going to be an adventure, and that was, you know, I'm in the process of buying, you know, a mobile setup type type thing with some light sticks and a stand, and we're going to go down in early September and scout, pick, you know, two or three different stands locations, four stands locations, mark them on the on the on the app, on the hunt stand app, and I just dropped my pen, and um, that's what we're doing. That's our adventure this year. Yeah, I wanted to get a pair of mobile sticks for that. Uh, I've got a couple. Of Lighter stands lined up. Uh, nothing special, but just some old stands I had that are lighter. Oh, thanks, man. I'm excited Appreciate for that. that. I'm excited for that. Sean, you love us. Well, we love you. Thanks for watching. What's not the love? I don't know. You got good looks and then humor. Yeah, the good looks on the right side of the screen. Mason, thanks, Travis. I live in the northwest part of Ohio, Toledo. Jeremiah, I live in North Idaho. Last year, I planted extreme. Uh, deer slammed it, and it never got above like two inches. Is there something you would recommend that would grow fast or a temporary fence? Go. Well, I would ask first. How much did you plant? Mm -hmm. Because if they slammed and it was only two inches high, it sounds like there was too much pressure on it. I don't even know so, what extreme is. What, what is that? Um, I'm not sure. It's, it's probably a White Tail Institute name. Mm -hmm. well, wow. I don't even, what, what's in the blend? What was it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. But, Jer uh, Jeremiah, tell us what's in that blend and how big the plot is. Steve, sorry guys, been in the middle of divorce. Hey Chris, how you doing, bud? Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, sorry to hear that. But I, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. I'm not in the middle of a divorce yet, so. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yet. Food plots is where it's at. Yeah, buddy. Well, food plots um is the best supplemental feed for wildlife. You can't. There's nothing else that's going to outcompete a food plot for supplemental feed. But obviously, with with that, um, you need 
browse. You need different varieties of food. It can't just be a food plot. A food plot's not going to be able to sustain, you know, the, the deer herd um, unless it's, you know, dozens of acres of food plots. But even then, you still need woody browse. You need a diverse, you know, set of food. That's the only thing that's going to grow, you know, give deer nutrition is supplemental wise is a food plot. You know, there's, there's a ton of uh, gimmicks out there and they can twist it and market it and, you know, every, every way they want, but uh, you need actual food. Sean Meyer says, hit that like button, people. Yeah, hit the like hey, button. Let me just comment right here. For those you might not know, this is a painless plug for myself. Oh, but God. Dave, obviously, Dave and I work together on his channel to form Whitetail Obsession Outdoors. But I have my own channel there called City Sticker Chris. Because we live in two different states, we can't always be together to do certain projects. So when Dave can't be around me and PA, there's obviously plots that I do and hunt and things that I do in PA. So I have my other channel called City Sticker Chris. And the idea behind it is two channels try to diversify, get more people watching. And he helps me on my channel too, obviously. What's it say? Now you don't care. You never plug me, so I have to do it myself. That's sad. Thanks, guys. You don't care. Oh, I care. Or I wouldn't have just rambled for two minutes. You did ramble. I can't believe not a single phone call tonight. I'm upset. I did see somebody subscribe, though. My feelings are hurt. Why? Because somebody subscribed to me? No, because nobody oh. called. I had to call you last week because nobody called. Not a thing anymore. Nobody likes it. I tried. I tried. Steve Porter says he watches me. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. My one and only fan. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was uh I thought it's something different to do, but I failed. I thought it was gonna be a big thing, man. I really did. I, I did well, too. the first week the first week you did it, it was pretty hot. It was. Whatever. Work, worked pretty good. You win, you lose. I mean, so. It was a glitch with the microphone where you had to hold the phone up to the speaker to hear it, but it, it now it's it, now it's lots of calls. I finally, I finally get it working right. Get it working and no one calls. And nobody calls. Is that phone ringing? It is. Hey, we got a caller. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Who is it? You are live. Hello, live caller. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Good. Who's this? Hey, it's Rockin' Retirement. It's Brendan up in Alaska. Oh, What's man. up, Alaska? Hey, I'm not going to leave you hanging with your equipment and everything. I decided nobody in the lower lower 48 is going to give you a call. I'll call for you. Yeah, man. Nice. How are we going over there? Sweet. It's really good, man. We've got about, it's negative six right now, so it's warm. Uh, snowing it's a little warm. bit. That is beautiful. Nice. He said it's warm and beautiful. Yeah, so warm. you guys... You guys, I'm not going to take up all your time. You guys ever want to come up and hit up like the 40 mile herd or anything? Just let me know. Yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm here for two more years, so you always got to bet if you guys want to head up here and check out Alaska. Okay. Oh Appreciate my, it. that would be right, sweet. Back to your show, but I'm constantly watching, and my brothers in North uh, Eastern Ohio looking over my 20 acres, and you guys have uh, both assisted us in uh, prepping my land to build a home. Oh, awesome! Nice, very nice. Good, good to hear. All right, man. Well, hey, you and Chris. Hey, man. Both have a great day, and I'm I'm constantly watching. All right, thank you. Same, same Thanks year. for calling, man. Good yeah, luck with that. Later. Bye, bye. Huh. That's cool. Alaska. Yep, he's watching from Alaska. That's cool. Crazy. Uh... We got 1.5 acre chicory, some Forbes. That sounds good. Hey, that's the guy that said he planted. And it got wiped out. Jeremiah, oh. he planted in Idaho. Remember, yeah. he uh, yeah. planted one one and a half acres of chicory and some Forbes. And well, it got wiped deer, out. If a deer wiped out a one and a half acre plot, you got a lot of deer. Yeah, there must be some pressure. Yeah. Um. The only thing that I can think of that's going to withstand that is uh, winter wheat. Winter wheat, uh, winter rye. It's going to be your most. Uh, you know, browse tolerant um, food source that you can plant. He says, yeah, lower 
comment there. He says, yeah, he's got like 15 deer in there every evening. I had the same situation here too, Jeremiah. Uh, yeah. Got a, little plot, got a little plot here just outside the yeah. house. Dave come over. We're sitting around a fire pit and the deer are like, what, 20 yards from us? Something 15, like that, yeah. 15 of them, 20 yards from us, just mowing down brassica yep. right beside the house. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I didn't care, but the problem is I didn't have enough planted for the pressure I was getting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, they, they will wipe it out. Definitely. Sure. Sure. Will. So try to go bigger, um, and try to incorporate some grains in there. Sean, I fertilize white oak trees. Am I wasting my time? Well, here's the thing there, there's, um, there's controversial. I seen an article, on social media that somebody was floating around saying it's a waste of time to fertilize oak trees. Um, and my opinion on this is I don't think it's a waste of time. I, um, I think fertilizing them can be a beneficial thing, but you also have to look at the tree itself. Um, you know, if the tree, it's just like, what's an example? Um, it, it's just like if you plant Egyptian wheat, if you plant Egyptian wheat too thick, no matter how much fertilizer, no how much micronutrients you add, no matter what you do to it, it's still going to be shunted. It's the same with trees. If you have too many trees together, no matter what you do, it's that tree is not going to improve itself unless you clear the other trees out from it to give it more room, more space, more sunlight. Um, so I think there's a balance between fertilizing the tree and then also ha that tree having enough room to actually expand itself and grow. Uh-oh. We lost Chris. Where did he go? Uh-oh. Chris left us. He'll be back. Oh, let's see. Jeremiah's pot is white to suit. It's Forbes, Clover, and Chicory, Steve Ford. Ah. I knew the name uh, Extreme sounded familiar. I just wasn't sure 100% uh, what it was. But now we know. But, yeah, if it's if it's an, an acre and a half food plot and the deer are wiping you out, we got to get uh, got to get her, get rid of some deer and um, plant, you know, plant something a little bit different. Uh, winter wheat, rye, some clovers, um, but 15 deer in a plot every evening. I mean, I have, I've had that situation in the past as well. And, um, you know, I've had, it was a straight field of winter wheat and I had 15, I have pictures, trail camera pictures, 15, 20 deer in the plot every night. And, um, you know, they, they didn't wipe, they wouldn't wipe it out. They couldn't, it was just, uh, it just kept coming back, coming back, coming back. And it all depends on your soil too. You know, if you have poor soil, you know, low fertility levels, it's not going to be able to make that plot um, withstand the uh, browse pressure. See, <laughs> putter, I have used uh, that before. The deer love it. You need a lot of it. Yeah, for sure. It's always a gamble whenever you go to plant uh, something new or you plant a new property because you're you're going to attract more deer. So. It, there's there there's a balance between it all um and each time you do it's always an experiment it's always a lesson it's always something to be taught you know whenever you do it uh okay yep i'm going to double the size i like feeding the does and fawns and seeing them but would like something left for hunting season when the stranger bucks come in thanks guys yeah no problem i like feeding the does and fawns as well um that's what builds bucks, you know, as a doze and fawns. Um, you know, there, there's little, there is reward to it. I think, um, on a wild deer, I think you can benefit the herd a little bit. Um, you pack a few more pounds on, pack a few more inches on the antlers on. Um, it just depends on how you're doing it. You know, if you're taking the time and you're, you're liming, you're, for, you're, you're fertilizing, you're, you're using micronutrients, you're doing this. Each little thing has its benefit, and um, it's what it's what you do this year that uh, that benefits next year always, no matter no matter what it is. 
it's, you know, you're putting out food plots, you're doing this, you're feeding them this, you're feeding them that. Whatever you do this year, stores in that deer, gets them through the winter, and then it builds on them, you know, year after year after year. The only reason I fertilize the white oak trees is for the acorns. Seems like the deer focus on these trees. Yeah, like I said, it, it's it's a controversial topic um, for some reason. I don't really know why, but um, when you fertilize oak trees and uh, you do this, you do that, it's obviously going to make that acorn more palatable compared to the other ones. So if deer are focusing on the trees more that you're fertilizing them, then I would I would continue to do it. You know, we take, um, I'm sure some of the guys on here, we take uh, a pressure washer and when we spray antler grow, we feed that through a pressure washer and we can shoot you near know, the trees and we spray the trees and with micronutrients, we spray the fruit trees, the apple trees. Um, we get it with the wind and you can, you know, just aim that up at the tree. You can cover that entire tree with that, with that pressure washer, um, with, you know, shoot it into the wind. Or with the wind and uh, you're good Chris's battery died we'll join back in here fool let's send him let's send him another invite paste just sent Chris another invite maybe he'll join back in uh how was your season mode sorry just being caught up i had a um an interesting season your I, feet i um shot uh, a few deer uh i actually grazed a buck uh early season it was a 10 pointer shot real low just grazed the grazed the belly um ended up missing that deer again uh about four weeks three weeks later um Saw some really nice bucks. Missed a giant buck with my bow again. Uh, I think it was November third or fourth. Um, so I had an interesting season of uh, ups and downs. Lost my release. Um, didn't get a hunt. Get, didn't get to hunt a whole lot um, compared to other years. Um, was just busy with some other stuff, but it was a fun year. Interesting year. Just found out I'm going rabbit hunting uh, of the hunting of the 21st of February. Nice. I haven't been rabbit hunting in years. Too many years. Missed the question. Uh, Jeff, I have 500 acres of cut down in North Carolina. Been working on four food plots I want to put in the spring. First time doing food plots next to creek bottoms. What should I try? Um, if, it, if it's open, you know, you have an open area next to that creek bottom, you obviously pray and hope that it doesn't flood it. But uh, something in that situation, uh, clovers would be a good bet. Um, in the, in the uh, spring, clovers, uh, you could do buckwheat. Um trying to think uh that would probably be your two best bets would be clovers and and uh buckwheat in, the, in that situation make sure you get enough sunlight if it's if it's in the woods make sure you get enough sunlight it's the number one failure um when it comes to food plots is uh not enough sun i mean you guys will guys will start planting them and um we just won't get no you'll get germination very fast uh the plant when you have lack of sun the plant will grow very fast and then when you get a wind or a rain or something that plant just flops over because it doesn't get that sun to be able to create a root base and it develops heavy tops and a weak a weak root system that plant will just fall right over no good uh sean meyer stupid batteries yep we lost chris 
Looks like he's uh, looks like he's struggling over there. He's not coming back. He's gone. Sean, y'all do any trapping predator control? Uh, I don't trap. Um, don't really have time for it in predator hunt. Um, I haven't went in a few years, but uh, this year I am going. We're going to do uh, coyote hunting. Uh, there's a few coyotes we've got to take care of and uh, kind of get those down a little bit. So we'll be doing that here in the next uh, couple weeks. Definitely be doing some coyote hunting. Jeff, thanks for the tips. I have good sunlight taking down small pines for the last four Saturdays awaiting soil test reports. Awesome. Um, if you have, um, if you're working with good sunlight, that that's great. Um, you've got to have sunlight in those areas. Um, it's the number one thing. Number one failure for food plots is that uh, not enough sunlight. Um, you get those soil samples, you're probably going to be pretty low, and you're probably going to need a lot of lime per acre. Um, to be able to bring those numbers up and um, I would personally if it's if it's any more than three or four thousand pounds I would do a split application of lime uh, per acre I would put on three thousand thirty five hundred something like that for the first year and then the next year follow up with the with the remaining lime uh, especially on, if you get your soil sample and the CEC when that soil sample is low very low which it probably will be um, I would do split applications. There he is. Chris if is back. Have, um, if you're working with good sunlight, that, that's great. Um, you got to have sunlight in those areas. Turn your volume off. Um, Failure for food thoughts is that uh, not some like, um, instantly when it's turn off. I can't even turn you off. See how you are? Just keep on running, running, running. <laughs> no, yapping always. Hey, gotta turn that light bag on. I was headed in there. Turn the TV off. I'm going to try to go to Logan's room. If I lose you again, I'm probably done. Yeah. He's done. I might be done. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see if I can get in there. That's funny. Look what he said. Oh, hold on. Let's see if it hopefully won't die. I can make it into his room. Logan, plug us in. Quickly. Later, Logan. Come on, boy. Put it in the wall. Yeah. I'm in, I think. Yep. I'm good. 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 Yep. Which one is it? It's this one. I don't need that one. Logan, say hi to the people. Hello. Logan, people you got a cow with Yes, I know. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. He's got his corona hair on. <laughs> exactly. Corona hair. He needs to go get a haircut. Thanks. There he is. Okay. You plug back in? Yeah, but I can't see any chat. Let me see. Steve uh Steve Porter says about time, Chris, almost bedtime. Yeah, no doubt. Last night I was in bed at eight thirty. I went out, went out and did a big project last night. Yeah, do no project. Yep, trimming, trimming, uh, growed up. Um, uh, Jeff, asks, Jeff asks, if pellet, pelletized lime. Okay, I can only get my four wheeler to use areas in the cut down. Jeff, yeah, pelletized lime. You can definitely use that. It's easy to spread. Um, you can work it in there, and uh, you'll be good to go. Yeah. Yep. Can you see the questions now? 
Yes, I can. I can see him now. Got to get their coyotes in check. Lots of guys in North Carolina run their own businesses of killing coyotes on people's property. Yeah. Um, coyotes can have a devastating impact for sure. You got to keep them in check. They were. <laughs> this is fun. They were bad around the house here for a couple of years, but haven't even heard them lately. Yeah. COVID-19, 99.98% survival rate. I agree with you, buddy. I ain't scared. I agree with you. Not even scared. That's what I miss. Did you uh, see me disappear? Did you see me disappear? You were gone. Um, I blacked out. Scooter this spring to get into spots. That's awesome. We may have some electric scooters here too. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. You don't care. No. Jeff's texting me. Jeff Beeler. Mm. Um Yes, I agree with this too. Take five thousand I use vitamin D daily. Already do, buddy. Already on top of it. I've been taking 5,000 IUs of vitamin D. I've been taking zinc, vitamin C, and elderberry. That's my regimen. I only take D. Lack of sun. See, that's another good point because we just, when you disappeared and your battery died, we talked about sunlight on food plots. And uh, it's the same with humans. You know, you got it. Sunlight produces vitamin D through your skin. Um, it's the same with plants. You know, plants absorb that sunlight and it creates vitamins and, and minerals and stuff in that plant for that plant to become a plant, a healthy plant. Same for humans, sunlight. You know, people in, in the wintertime lack sunlight. So their vitamin D levels drop. So you get sick more often. It's the same for plants. Um, Plants gotta have sunlight. Yeah, I have, I have a couple conditions health wise where I had deficiencies in vitamins, and so that's why I take them. But I was so low that they said I could have laid in the sun and fried like bacon, and it wouldn't have rose. It wouldn't have rose up high enough to use the vitamin D. So supplementation in that sometimes is a good thing. Nice to see you, smart people. I wouldn't call myself <laughs> smart. Informed. Informed. I'm actually pretty dumb. Uh, Jeff. I was thinking of pulling an aerator over these four first-time food plots. Would that help them broadcast a seed on that, then run back over after seeding? Um, an aerator would probably get your seed too deep. Um, it could work. Um, personally, I would just drag it maybe, um, just drag the food plot and, uh, seed that, another issue with that. I'll bring that up to is I made a video about this last year, but, uh, another food plot failure is when people plant the seed too deep. Um, when you plant seed too deep, it won't germinate and you'll get low germination rates. So you have to think of a bird. Um, when a bird poops, it drops seeds and the seed grows you know, they, nothing was done to it other than Mother Nature. So when you're planting food plots, you just have to be careful not to plant seeds too deep. All COVID deaths have vitamin D deficiencies. I agree too, buddy. This guy's on top of it. I agree yeah. with you. Yep. I've been riding a mountain bike in the spots for years. It's a great option. It's a great thing to do. Yeah, if I didn't have six inches of snow on the ground right now, I'd probably be riding. Yeah, one hour of sun gives 50,000 of vitamin D. Don't know, but I believe it. All right, so we got seven minutes to go. So if anybody, yeah, we, got, yeah, we, we got all night. All night. We got all night. You're just being a sissy. Well, I'm getting. I got to pee. Of course, I had um, a seven. I had a seven minute break there while I was offline. Yeah, we're gonna go seven more minutes. So if anybody has hammers with questions, we're gonna jam them out. 
questions, go hammer them out. Anybody got a phone call? We'll take a phone call and then um, we'll, we'll just we'll hammer the questions out real quick. So let them rip. Question was, did anybody think I was coming back? No, they all said they didn't care. He gone. He's gone. Uh, 55 years old, too old to start biking the sports, but figure electric scooter would help. Heck yeah. I got all kinds of ideas for electric, sco electric scooter this year. Yeah, man. We're going to jam these questions out. Ever hunt with a crossbow? Me? I have not. I have. I mix it up. I've got a couple of bad shoulders with arthritis and things when it gets below like 45 degrees sometimes. If it's real damp, I, I'll take the crossbow. Mm. Next one. My brother checked the cameras today, and the deer are still holding antlers. Anyone finding sheds? I personally haven't went shed hunting yet. Um, some of the trail camera pictures that I've received, I still see bucks holding antlers. So usually where I'm at, uh, we usually find them around end of February, early March. I haven't looked. There's a few guys online I watch locally here that said they found some. You haven't looked. You're lazy. Yeah, whatever. Jeff, okay, these areas all have tall grass. I'm running weed eater over them now. We'll spray weed kill and broadcast seed. Don't want to plant too deep. Thanks for the tip again. Awesome. What state is Jeff in that uh, he's weed eating? He's weed whacking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm snow blowing. He's weed whacking. <laughs> yeah, you're snow blowing. He's weed whacking. <laughs> I think he's in Georgia. Is that is that what the, I think Jeff was in Georgia? One seed only to plant. What would it be? <laughs> I'll let you go first. Well, I know what I'm going to say. I would say in the springtime, one seed Wait. would probably be buckwheat. Okay, he didn't I'm specify, it, but name it for the spring and the fall. Go. Just one for both? Yeah. Well, one for the spring. Yeah, one for the spring would be I'd probably use buckwheat for smothering weeds and okay. having something fill the field. And in yep. the fall, if it's just one seed, I'd have to go with winter wheat. Okay. Well, springtime, I got the same answers. Buckwheat. Or an annual clover. Um, springtime would be winter wheat. If I had to plant one thing in the in the in the fall, it'd be winter wheat. Jess from North Carolina. Weed, hemp, deer love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff uh, grew twenty acres of hemp in Kentucky this year, and they had to spread or uh, spread. Um. Uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, that poop, deer poops, or uh, human. Oh, I, I know what you're uh, talking about. I got a brain. Does it, fart. Does it start with an M? Yeah. It starts with an M. Uh, um, Melogranite. No. Melogranite. 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 I can't pronounce it, but yeah. Something like that. That stuff. He had to, he had to spread that around his plots uh, every two weeks. Keep deer out. Melogranite. <laughs> That's it. What? Organite. I don't know how to say it. I just said it. Mill organite. That's wrong because you said it. It ain't wrong. Yeah, because you say wash and water. Water. Wash. Wash and water. Water. It's probably you don't say roots. roots. W O O T E R. Water. Water. How are you able to type? I don't know. Just type. Uh, just started snowing here in North Carolina. Got to go riding, guys. Thanks for the live stream. Awesome. Good to have you. All right, Chris, I'm going to put you on blast real quick. Ready? What up? Hmm? For what? You'll see. You're on big screen. You ready? 
Big sexy. What? You just bought a brand new property. Okay? No, I didn't. Imagine that you did. Okay. What would be the very first thing that you would do to it? For deer. For deer. deer. Yeah. You want to hunt in the fall, you get it in the spring. What would be the very first thing you do? Does it have open property? Sure. Okay. I'd probably... I see Steve. Probably, He's thinking. I, I would be soil sampling. Mm -hmm. I would be looking for an entrance and exit strategy for, for a food plot. I would be looking for... Uh, ways for the animals to approach that field because like i said i don't hunt a lot of field edges i hunt more of the woods travel routes and get in between bedding area and destination plots mm -hmm. uh, but yeah that's what i would do uh actually the first thing i probably do would post it <laughs> i'd probably yeah. have to post it and then do soil samples yeah because if I'm purchasing or paying taxes or leasing something, obviously you don't want to uh, inv un unwanted invites yeah. to be in there enjoying the fruits of your labor. Right. First thing I would do is uh, post the property, deal with deal with that first, and then I'll yep. be looking. I'll be scouting. I'd put a couple trail cameras up. I'd be looking for entry and exit routes. Yep. determining where I'm going to put a food plot. I'd soil test. I'd be correcting it with lime and I'll be looking either to use existing um, travel corridors, creating travel routes, figuring out where the DR scouting. That'd be the very first thing that I do and kind of put all that together yep. into a giant ball. It's hard to do just one thing. Yeah. And that's what I would do. But, yeah, first of all, it would be purple paint and posted signs, probably. You don't know purple paint. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'd be doing. Water. Water. Okay. Um, it's been a lovely night, and uh, I'm going to get ready and hop off here. And uh, I just want to say thanks for everybody for joining in. We got two more comments. I was going to say, there's a couple more comments. Um, answer these quick. Straight addition wheat are mixed with sorghum and sun hemp. I uh, would not use sun hemp. Um, sorghum and Egyptian wheat is perfectly fine. More Egyptian wheat than, than uh, sorghum. Preston, we did a soil test, did everything it called for, and they failed. They keep failing. We are tired of wasting money. Hunting with Preston, um, your issue is sunlight. From the pictures and stuff you sent me, you have zero sunlight. So without sunlight, no matter how much lime, soil testing you do, fertilizer, all that, um, without sunlight, you got nothing, unfortunately. I'd buy a cheap bag of mixed seeds to feed birds and start dumping some on a specific location. Deer love the same seeds birds love along with fresh apples and it's cheap and easy to spread sure they love bird feeders <laughs> they really do yep yep thanks again guys um we're going to do this again next week probably saturday or sunday keep an eye on the channel subscribe to city sticker chris subscribe to myself whitetail obsession outdoors and then maybe next week we'll get some uh some calls on here Depends so, on uh, what time we get home next week, right? Oh yeah, shoot. We, we got, got a consult uh, to do. Yeah, we got uh I got one Friday, I got one Saturday, and I got one Sunday. So um in between there we'll definitely figure it out. Try it again. Yeah. Maybe we do it from uh could Friday. do it here. Could do it from camp. Could yeah, could do it here. Um Travis, stay healthy, fellas. No doubt. Have a great week. All right. I'm out, Have Chris. Later. All right. Bye. Later, See you, everybody. Later. Bye.